This is an animation of a T-Rex in C4D Studio. And this is that animated T-Rex in Element 3D, which as it happens, doesn't use C4D at all for this to work. This video is all about how to get animated characters into Video Copilot Element. It's simple, but it involves a lot of steps. To understand how I got here, able to composite this awesome model, we've got to go back more than a full decade. Back in 2010, I stumbled across this Rexy which I've never been able to come up with a use for. Until now. After announcing I was done with C4D Lite at the end of my Asteroid Belt tutorial, I still had to clear out my old files. And that's when I refound this incredible download. And I thought, at least I can still import it into Element 3D. But as you're watching this video, you know it's not that easy. The models are too old to open in the current version of C4D R23, and while Element can import C4D animations, this is limited to position, scale and rotation animation. And even if I could open this model in C4D Lite, Lite doesn't have character animation. So many roadblocks. I also want to point out that while I'm quitting C4D, this is very much only because of the software. I've recently had interactions with staff both at Maxon Support and Red Giant, and they're really nice guys. It's just certain product decisions that I have a problem with. So this video isn't an extended rant about Maxon. This video is a general how-to. But I'm going to be using the T-Rex model to illustrate the steps, and because it was a huge pain to do, I'm also going to share it with you, unless the copyright holder gets in touch and asks me to remove the download. The T-Rex is actually a collection of 79 separate animation files, and I have no idea who made it. There's no readme file. One clue is that the image map has a scar designed into it, but I long ago photoshopped that out. I did find it currently shared on this site from 2012, but I couldn't get in touch with the owner and none of the other files they share are similar. My guess is, like me, they found these files and wanted to share them far and wide. If you did make this model all those years ago, thank you, and amazing job. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about converting the T-Rex and the hurdles involved. If you're watching this video for how to get any animation into Element, I've chaptered it, so feel free to jump ahead. So the first hurdle with the Rexy files is that they're saved in version R11, which means any copy of C4D newer than R19 won't be able to open them. Fortunately, a buddy of mine still has a copy of Studio R14, and he was able to open all the files, but C4D doesn't export OBJ sequences. I turned to the internet and learned that Robite offers Plexus OBJ Sequence Exporter for versions R17+. Plus. No. It seemed like Rexy was destined for extinction, but then I was nudged in the direction of Owen Lim, who shared on Behance their Python script which runs directly inside C4D. To use you need to create a text file with the extension .py. And paste in Owen's script. Then open your character animation file in full C4D. Owen's script is based on the output frame range. So the first thing needed was to go into render, edit render settings and set the frame range from the current frame to all frames. But if we export the animation now, it will only export a static mesh. So we need to bake the deformation. And to do that, we need to add a point cache tag to the model. In the object panel, right click on the model and then go to character tags, point cache. The tag opens in the attribute manager and after clicking stock state, you need to click calculate. C4D then runs the animation storing the deformations to the model, which would normally be caused by the rig. At this point, return to the object manager, expand the model and delete the rig child object. It's not needed anymore as the model's deformation was cached in the point cache and leaving it seems to mess up the animation. Now we can export it. Go to script, user scripts, run script. A dialog box will open and locate Owen's Python script you saved earlier. Loading it, a second box will open, prompting you to pick a location and file name for your OBJ sequence. After a couple of minutes, you're done in Cinema 4D. And in Rexy's case, just repeat that 78 more times. And now this is ready to import as an animated sequence into Video Copilot Element 3D. In After Effects, add a new solid and add Video Copilot Element 3D to it. Open the Element console. Don't click on Import. Instead, go to File, 
Import 3D Sequence. You can tell if you've done it right because the model will appear in this panel with the number of frames in brackets. OBJ files don't contain textures, but the original download did. So select the attached blank material in the textures panel and then click on the non selected in the diffuse panel and then load texture. Navigate to the T-Rex textures folder and load in T-Rex diff.jpg. And then do the same for the normal bump, loading in Trex norm. If I select the model now and click and drag on the start frame, I can see Rexy move. And clicking OK, I'm now in After Effects with a 3D dinosaur. I can set animation keyframes by expanding Group 1, Particle Look, Baked Animation. I don't know about you, but I kind of feel that deserves a like at least. It's right there. There. Yeah. In the bottom corner. Just down a bit. Oh, thank you. That was so unexpected. If you download the T-Rex OBJ sequences, and be warned, the file clocks in at 1.2 gigabytes, but if you download and play with the files, you'll see each sequence only lasts a few seconds. And if you scrutinize the model, you'll see that it's not the most detailed model. But that's okay. Because the less time on screen, the better it looks. Keeping your VFX shots really short, the audience doesn't have time to spot the inconsistencies and their minds fill in the blanks. So you like the T-Rex, but you want other character animations to use in Element 3D. Let me introduce you to Mixamo. According to Wikipedia, Mixamo is a 3D computer graphics technology company. Based in San Francisco, the company develops and sells web-based services for 3D animation. There is, was some connection to Adobe Creative Cloud, but it never left the trial phase and was discontinued as part of Adobe's Fuse offering. But it still exists in its own right, and you can even use your Adobe login to get an account. Mixamo comes with a range of both characters and animations. Do I sound like I'm reading from a marketing script? I promise this is not a paid promotion, although, you know, marketing people, hit me up, I'm not above selling out. As far as I can tell, Mixamo is free for personal use. You search for a character you like, and then apply an animation to them. It also has an AI auto-rigging service. So if you have a model, looks like Mixamo can rig it for you. Once you have your character animation set up, you can download it from the download button. But for use with Element, make sure you download the Collada version. Because the next thing we need to do is use Blender to import and then save out the OBJ sequence. Blender is a free, open source, 3D computer graphics software toolset used for creating animated film visually. Yeah, 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 you get the idea. I probably should donate to Wikipedia one of these days. Blender looks really scary, and that's why I'm going to be preparing my own set of tutorials using it from an After Effects perspective. For now, click through the various dialog boxes until you get to the platform. Go to File, Import, Collada, Navigate to your virus scanned and unpacked Mixmo animation and select it. And now go to File, Export, Wavefront OBJ. Make sure your animation is checked in the export settings and click Export. Back in After Effects in Element, Follow the same procedure as before to import the OBJ sequence. Oh, where is it? Scrolling in... Oh wow, it, it's tiny! Scaling it up takes care of that. And then we can add our textures back in from the original Mixamo download. And there you go! Part of the reason I made this tutorial is that there are lots of steps, and I couldn't find information all in one place for how to do it. Whether you're creating a dinosaur movie or just wanting to import a CG character you've either found or created, I couldn't find anywhere showing me the end-to-end -end process. 
Hopefully this will help you too. Let me know in the comments if it does. Until next time. Yeah, yeah, very cute, but we know it's CG. Oh wait, so am I.